here created would point towards the chin and the right shoulder. Hi everyone, today's lesson is all about the grip, how we hold the club and whether you should be making some adaptations for your personal golf, how it can help you play better golf with a slight grip tweak or change and also understanding why we hold the club a certain way as well going forward to make you play better golf, lower scores and enjoy your golf more. So keep watching if you want to learn some tips and secrets around the golf grip. So today we're looking at the golf grip, we're looking at how we should hold the club and how we might make some adaptations depending on your handiness or your golf ball flight that will make you again enjoy your golf better without having to slave away in the golf range making lots of swing changes. So I've got a glove here and I've marked it up with some key points just to help for references. We're going to try and give you as many close-ups as we can to go through this. We're going to talk about the common errors that I would see in the golf grip and what they cause in the golf swing and then how you may want to hold the golf club. So we're going to talk about it being the right-handed golfer if you don't mind and we're going to talk about the left hand first. Now the key things with the left hand is we're looking to place the club in the right part of the hand. We get so many golfers that will hold the golf club in the palm. So you'll see here these lines I've drawn. This is where we want to hold the golf club. So I want that club to sit in between those two black lines I've done. Now if you look where these black lines are, they basically run through the fingers of the club is the key thing, but basically if I cradle my hands, you'll see this club sits in the cradle quite nicely, like so. But what I'm looking to do really is make this club pass through the middle joint of this, or the bottom joint rather, not the bottom bottom joint, but obviously you've got the three joints here, that's not explained that well, but this joint here in the, in the little finger there, it wants to start there and it wants to pass all the way through there so the top end of the grip, as we look away from us, would sit at the bottom joint in my left hand finger here in my left hand so the club sits like so if we're taking our grip the important thing also to do is make sure my fingers are pointing to the ground too many golfers when they come to do this point the hand under here and then take it in their fingers and you can see there it makes the club run up the palm of the hand so yeah making sure we have the fingers to the floor look to cradle the hands and make sure then those black lines are where the club would sit in terms of placement, we want this finger to be an inch from the top of the grip here. Just an inch there. Then as we look at the thumb, the thumb wants to be fractionally, fractionally, fractionally rotated over to this side. And if you look at this arrow I have here, that should point in between my chin and my right shoulder. And as I look down at my hands here, this little circle I put around my knuckles, I would want to be seeing that circle at address. Now, if my hands were particularly bigger, I would probably see slightly more knuckles than I would do if my hands were slightly smaller. If I had my hand over here too much, that would be too much of what we call a weak grip, and that would encourage the face to open at impact. If I had my hand too much over here, that would be a strong grip, and it would encourage the club to close at impact. So if I take my grip position correctly and point my last finger here now down, that should point parallel to the shaft. If it doesn't point parallel to the shaft, it would be either in a strong or a weak position, depending which way I move it around there. So that's pretty much the left hand. The thumb wants to be just past the knuckle there. If I had a long thumb, that creates different pressures in my forearm and makes it pretty hard to set and cock the wrist in the backswing. So I like, if anything, to have a more shorter thumb. Now in terms of the right hand, how it attaches, again we want it to join the bottom joint in those fingers ideally and then close on again, fingers point to the floor and thumb on top. Now what we have then is basically a choice between baseball or 10 finger grip, interlock or overlap. Those are the three kind of options. Now, generally speaking, the baseball is good for people with small hands and I'd also probably recommend the baseball for people who basically were left-handed playing right, because the right hand overlapping really tends to reduce the strength in the right hand. If you're a mad hook of the golf ball, make sure you've got a good overlap or a good interlock there. You really feel that there's more pressure in the left hand than there is in the right. The right hand's more on for the ride. If you're a slicer, 
you might well want to try some practice with certainly the 10 finger grip or even feeling the right hand's a bit more dominant. In terms of the Vs, again, the Vs would point from the finger and thumb here, created would point towards the chin and the right shoulder. And what we'd want to do there is have a trigger finger here. So the gap here between the fingers, we want that to be in place. That helps control the club face through impact and control the pressure. Again, if the thumbs up here, we'll tend to get a bit more right-handed. So this tends to help reduce the right hand action again. Again, if we point the fingers out, we'll point the finger out and it'll go parallel to the shaft. So we're looking for that kind of positions. We're looking for that kind of symmetry with the fingers. We're looking for basically that control. In terms of overlap or interlock, if they're done correctly, I don't really mind which one you do. Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods use interlock plus a few other tall players for sure. I couldn't list every single tall player that uses interlock, but certainly there are more players that use overlap. If I'm teaching a beginner, I will always teach overlap. Now the reasons behind that, if I grip it interlock, it is quite easy for my hands to work apart, as you'll see here, separate. I've still interlocked my fingers. I don't feel much difference in my interlock. It is still intact. Whereas if I overlap and move my hands apart, my fingers start to come apart as well. So for me, it gives me a bigger sense of security. However, if either one is done correctly, it doesn't matter. So I get a lot of people when I put things like I'd rather see an overlap come and question, say, well, Jack Nicholas uses overlap. Yeah, great, no problem. If you do it correctly, I haven't got a problem with it at all. There has to be some level of comfort for you, for sure. If you're uncomfortable overlapping, interlock. If you're uncomfortable interlocking, overlap. Don't change your grip from an overlap to an interlock just because I say it's better. Get your golf grip correct. The main adaptations would be more around if you're a slicer of the ball, can you go to 10 fingers? Would that be a change that you could make that would make a difference to your golf game without really slaving away on the range? It's a wrong, it's not right, but again, it might help you short term. I definitely believe if you're a left-handed golfer playing right-handed, I would definitely try that for sure. So the biggest issues we kind of see is people having a strong grip. So that's both hands to the right-hand side. That tends to want to close the club face. Now, if you've got a strong grip and slice the ball, don't change it. Work on your release pattern first, then change your grip. If you need to, you might work on your release pattern and hit great shots and think, okay, I don't need to make any more changes. If you're a hook and you have a weak grip, same thing. Try and get your golf game to match your grip before you make a grip change. Too many golf coaches will go and see someone's grip and think that's really bad, really horrible, I'm gonna change that without looking at the ball flight and patterns before they make that decision. We wanna make you better as players, not look better. That's the idea of a golf coach for me. And that's my take on it. So we want it to match what you're doing. The palmy grip, if you have it in your palm, like we said, the key things with the palmy grip is really a bendy left arm in the backswing, okay? A kind of casty, floppy kind of arm action on the way down and a lack of power and it can also cause top shots. So the palmy grip is a big one for me. We definitely want to get rid of the palmy grip. So if you think of how you pick something off like a basket off the ground, you grip it in your fingers. That's what we want to do with this. We want to grip it in our fingers. So the process quite simply would be for me, and you can do various ones. You can hold a club in the air like this, cradle the fingers, put your, your hand on the glove, club. You want to make sure your thumb is ever so slightly favoring the right hand side, then your right hand on, and feel there's a nice connection and pressure. We want to feel that the lifeline of the right hand is pushing into that thumb like so. That's the height of the hand. We don't want the hand to be too high, too gappy in here, lots of space there. That is not good. We want to feel that. Then we want to feel that trigger grip, or like almost like we'd hold a pen or a pencil to help that feeling there through impact. A good way of checking your grip is to use a T and see where that T would be pointing. Again, if I have a strong position, T points off to the right. Weak position, T points off to the left. And you can use that in both hands and you can actually keep that in there while you hit shots. That'll give you some feedback if your hand's moving around or not. In terms of pressure and tension, ideally if we imagine 10 out of 10 would be strangling the club, I'd want it to be about five. Five would give you control of the club without being too tight and then affecting how your wrist would want to cock and work. 
if you have it too loose for me, the hands are going to be moving around too much through impact particularly. So we want to have it in a nice position where we've got control of the club. We're understanding how the club works. We're getting feedback from the club, but we're not throwing it away. We've got some tension there. If, as I said, you were a hooker of the golf ball, I'd put more pressure in this left hand. And if you're a slice of the ball, I'd probably put more pressure in the right hand. That would be just adaptations, cheats, if you like, to make you change your ball flight. Key thing is, don't fiddle with your grip. Once you've got your grip in place, you know, particularly on, on the club, try and get into the golf shot. Don't fiddle anymore. Then go ahead and pull the trigger. Trust what you have. You know, make you feel comfortable. If you're there, hands on and off all the time, they're going to be moving around. You're going to be thinking too much. We don't want to be thinking too much when we play. We want simple thoughts when we play. Work on mechanics on the range for sure. That's when we make changes to our golf game. So I hope you've enjoyed that look at the golf grip in quite a bit of detail. The key things is gripping it correctly to suit your ball flight, understanding how your grip affects your ball flight, making sure there's a balance there and they match. And if there is, Great, if as long as it's the ball flight you want. If not, you can make some changes either to the pattern of movement, the release pattern or whatever, or how you hold the club. If you've enjoyed it, please click like and share the video. I'm sure there's other people out there who would enjoy seeing the video and learning about their grip also. Plus, post any questions or comments down below or requests for videos. Lastly, thank you for joining me today at the Forest of Arden. It's been great to have you here. Hope to see you back here very soon.